Well, let's get this party going. I'm uh, uh, Commissioner Scheel and, and uh, Com Commissioner Hansen, who normally conducts this, is absent today and they've asked me to, to fill in. So uh, good luck to y'all. So uh, let's, let's begin and uh, we'll start off with an invocation by uh, Commissioner Mitchell and then uh, Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Bullock. Our dear Father in heaven, we're grateful to be gathered this evening for our meeting this night. We're thankful for the wonderful circumstances that we were able to gather. We're grateful for this wonderful city that we have the opportunity to live in. And we're so grateful for the beautiful surroundings we have to enjoy. We're thankful for all those who serve and, and make it such a great place to be. We pray that as we begin our meeting that we will be guided and directed and that we can all take care of the items that are on the agenda in a peaceful manner and that everyone can share their thoughts and ideas and, and all will go well. And again, we're grateful for all that we have and all that was given us. And as we pray and do so in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. We do appreciate everybody uh, coming and joining us today and, and hope you feel welcome. And we do have some, uh, uh, some, some items here that, that have some public comments and we invite you to, to participate if you'd like. And, uh, and we'll give you a whole three minutes when you wanna come up and talk. So, uh, we'll proceed. Um, uh, we need to uh, get an approval of the agenda for this evening's agenda. This is Commissioner Bullock. I move to approve the agenda as lined out for the October 18th, 2023 meeting. This is Commissioner Mitchell. I second. I've got a a uh, motion to approve and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, we need to uh, take a gander at the minutes from our September 20th uh, Planning Commission meeting, and I need an approval of those minutes. Ms. Commissioner Tupo, I move to approve the minutes from September 20th, 2023. Ms. Commissioner Bullock, I second. I have a first and a second on approval of the minutes. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, motion to passes. Uh, this time, uh, I'd like to see if there's any declaration or absentations or conflicts for this evening's agenda. Mm. Uh, no, uh, just for record, I am a commercial real estate broker that I sell and lease commercial properties. Our first item on the agenda is a commercial project that's a large industrial project that I'm not on the listing, but I do participate in leasing properties, but I don't see the reason that I need to abstain from that item on the agenda. So with that, we'll move on to item number 4A, which is a public hearing for consideration and recommendation to the City Council for a zone change request Z-23-10 from C3 to PUDC, located approximately the east end of the St. George Regional Airport and the west of the Southern Parkway. 
applicant is Bush and Gudgel. And with that, we'll turn the time over to Eldon with the staff to present. Can you give that to Pete? It's already, thank you. Thank you, commissioners. I think just some back talk on there. Yeah, we're good. The requested change is from the current zoning of C3 to a proposed planned unit development commercial. The name of the proposed de development is ARA Southwest Logistics Center. The general plan land use designation was approved several months back to the PUDC category. The surrounding zoning is C3 to the east and west and St. George City to the north and south. The PUDC request is for the purpose of developing the acreage into a commercial industrial distribution center consisting of 15 very large warehouse type buildings of varying size. The buildings will range from 186,000 square feet up to 500,000 square feet in size with a proposed approximately 4.6 million square feet of total building coverage. So a very large, large scale development. This project will look a lot like the new commercial industrial development that is being built on the far east end of Las Vegas right off of I-15. There's also another development in the Salt Lake Valley closer to the airport there. The exterior finishes are attractive and well designed, along with attractive landscaping being proposed as shown in the exhibits attached to the report. Parking is an issue with a project this size, but only in the sense that if the standards as outlined in the current city code were to be strictly followed, there would be an unnecessary ocean of asphalt associated with this development. The applicant along with staff is proposing a more acceptable proposal due to the nature of the use of the overall project. These buildings will be used only as distribution type centers for a variety of different businesses, which means much less employees than normal type businesses. There will be a large number of semi trucks coming and going on a regular basis and employee parking needs will be very small in number. The city's required parking for these 15 buildings would be 6,841 stalls. But again, due to the nature of the business types that are going to be in this development, we're asking for a reduction of stalls with a total of 4,542. Aerial pictures have been provided in your package showing an average day of parking at another location owned and operated by the applicant in the West Valley City area. It is very clear that the proposed 4,542 stalls will be more than adequate for this Washington City development. Staff has no concerns with, with these parking modifications being made. Staff has spent a good amount of time working with the applicant to bring this project forward at this time, a development agreement will be provided, proposed to the city council in conjunction with this zone change request. Staff recommends that the planning commission recommend approval of Z-23-10 for the zone change request from C3 to the proposed planned unit development commercial. And that's on to the city council and based on the following findings and conditions as stated in the report. And we can um, review these slides here. This is a good outline of the development. This is the boundary, the legal description of all the land that the development will fall in. So rather than scroll through, I think the original packet had 50 some odd pages in it. Uh, the next couple slides are going to focus on these phase one and two buildings. Uh, the neat thing about this project is that we, we know what all of the buildings are gonna look like. 
So after looking at these few images here, um, that, that's going to be the remaining of the, the development that will follow suit. So these first two buildings, you can see where they're located to kind of orient yourself around those there. This view is looking east towards the Southern Parkway between um, buildings 102 and I think 110. These red dots highlight where these entrances into the development will be. Some different views here. Here's the proposed parking broke broken down here, comparing the West Valley um, project that it was compared to. This is the West Valley numbers. And here's what's being proposed in our project. We've got the square footage of roughly 4.6 million square feet of building space. Uh, the proposed 4,542 parking stalls. That's on average one parking space per 1,023 square foot of building. At this time, I, I have a, there's a two minute video clip. I think it would be good to play if you commissioners don't mind. We can just run through that real quick. Kind of highlights the project. Yep, that'd be good. Uh, this is a public, hearing also so we'll go through the video then we'll have a chance to talk amongst the commissioners and then we can open it up to public hearing Anything else, Eldon? No, as you can see, it's a very well-designed, thought-out, um, great project. We're excited to see this move forward, and I'm happy to answer any questions you guys may have for me. 
Okay, I'll open it up to the commissioners for discussion. Uh, one comment is a lot of these pictures or graphs were from a project that was completed up in uh, West Valley City, up by Salt Lake City. So they're not new to the game. They know what they're doing. They, they do a lot of these projects. And uh, anyway, any comments or questions? Um, I, this is Commissioner Tupo. Um, I had a, I had thought that we were putting shopping centers or something like that, but that looks like distribution centers. So. Yeah, yeah, it'll be um, I1, I2 uses, mm -hmm. maybe with some, a little bit of commercial mixed in. Yeah. Did we, um, did we finish, it, does this project include the, the road that connects it to Washington? Was that figured out? So are yeah, we, that's that's are underway. We one or are we the utilities are in that road. If you drive down there, you'll see where it's mm -hmm. gone, cut through the mountain over there, and it's they're they're making some pretty big headway. You referring to ownership and and working that out with the yeah, road? Yeah, um, I'm wondering if we did the alternate route or if we if we got cooperation from St. George. Uh, from what I understand, St. George was cooperative, and it it came with both sides. Oh, okay. Thank you. So this is Commissioner Mitchell, to go along with the roads. So the exit coming off the parkway, is that part of this project or will it be part of the previous project? Make it, uh, doing the on-ramp to the parkway. That's not there currently, correct? Yes, I understand this development will bring their side of the on-off ramps. John, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but that's that's what I understand. Just on the west side, the on-off ramps. That's that's the correct understanding. Um, in your packet, you'll notice there's still a an indication that the development agreement isn't complete, which it is not. It will be, um, but the development agreement addresses some of the elements that will be done there, and and the applicant will build out and complete the east side strike that the west side, west side of the interchange at that location and through their contacts and correlation with other landowners may actually have all of it completed at the same time and 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 there may be a way that they can allocate those those expenses and take care of that so it all gets completed at once thank you so if we if we approve this and we're changing it to a pud or, or, or we just change it to a PUD zone. I mean, PUDC. it doesn't. Right, but I mean, this will be the last we see of this project here, right? We don't have to come in for each building after this. Correct. Correct. Um, so, so your your meeting tonight is just to recommend to the city council. If the city council approves it at their meeting, um, if the PUD if the PUD doesn't get amended or altered. Um, they essentially submit to staff, staff reviews according to the plan, um, and staff approves. That, that, that's, that was that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Um, I don't, looking through this, I don't know if there's going to be any mezzanines or anything like that in these buildings. It didn't, it doesn't show, but would that be something they'd have to come back and amend the PUD for if they decide to put a mezzanine in these buildings? Are you talking an interior mezzanine? Yes. I know that these buildings are planned and constructed so that so that the potential tenants and occupants can occupy office, you know, but, industrial, whatever in there. And so um, the answer is the city won't take a, a uh, administrative interest in the, in the interior, although they, they would, you know, need to inspect and just right, make but sure. I'm saying it won't have to come back to us for a mezzanine. That's, that's what I wanted right. to make sure of because I didn't see anything. I just wanted to make sure that we were giving them that option before they had to come back. Correct. So legislative approvals aren't required for the buildings, but there will be administrative, you know, inspections and all of that as as those things are are underway. Okay. So this is a public hearing, as we stated. Uh, I'll open the public hearing if there's anybody in. In the congregation that'd like to get up and make some comments, uh, or we would invite this the uh, applicant to come up also 
you'd like to. State your name, tell us who you are and what you're doing. My name is Don Bean. I'm a resident of Washington City and I am in favor of the zone change. I think it'd be a great benefit to the city and to all of its residents. Um, I think it's a great thing that they're coming here and we've chosen Washington City and I hope you support that. Thanks. Thank you. Would the applicant like to say anything? Are we happy? We don't have anything to add. We're super excited to be here. Um, if you have any questions about the project, we're happy to answer any of those. But um, I think Eldon did a great job of, of illustrating what we've got going on. And it hasn't been a secret, right? We've been coming for a long time. So um, any questions, I'm happy to answer them, though. OK, appreciate that. Thanks for your comments. Any other comments? With that, we'll close the public hearing and uh, turn it back to the commissioners to make a motion or more comments. I'll make a motion. Commissioner Anderson, I'll make a motion to recommend approval of Z-23-10, a request to rezone approximately 276.68 acres located approximately on the east side of St. George Airport and to the west of Southern Parkway, Highway 7, from the current general commercial C3 zoning to a proposed planned unit development commercial PDC zoning designation. With the two findings and 11 conditions as outlined by staff, um, and, and noting on condition 11 that the development agreement is supposed to be done before city council meets. This Commissioner Bullock, I'll second. I have a uh, motion by Commissioner Anderson, a second by Commissioner Bullock. All in favor individually, Anderson? Aye. Bullock? Aye. Tupol? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. And Sheil Amanai also. The, ma the motion passes unanimously and we'll move forward to the City Council for their approval or yeah. look at it. Could I add one comment on yep, that? Yep, yep, sorry. Um, for those of you that are following this, we're um, it's not going to go the following week. We're shooting for the November 8th meeting that this will drop for city council, but stay tuned and keep an eye out on the city's website for the exact date. Okay. Got note of that, I guess. We're happy. Okay, we'll move forward. Uh, item number 5A on the agenda is an amended final plat approval for homestead at Stuckey Farms, phase four, lots 29 and 30, located at 4885 South Homestead Way. The applicant is Caleb Judkins. The owner is Caleb Judkins. And the engine, well, I don't need to go into all that. We'll just turn some time over to Eldon, staff. Thank you, Commissioner Pro Tem. The reason for this amendment is to combine lots 29 and 30 so that no lot line exists between the two lots. No other changes are being made at this time. Staff has reviewed the proposed amended final plat and finds it conforms to the planned community development zoning of this development. Subdivision also remains in compliance with the subdivision ordinance of the city. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission recommend approval of the homesteads at Stuckey Farms phase four, lots 29 and 30 partial amendment, combining lots 29 and 30. And that's on to the city council based on the following findings and conditions as stated in the report. And I'm happy to answer any questions you may have at this time. Okay, thank you. This too is a public hearing, so we'll discuss again uh, amongst us and then we'll open up the public hearing. So any comments or questions? No. Okay, uh, with a public hearing, we'll open that now. Is there anybody in the congregation that would like to make comments? Is the applicant here? They want to say anything? Uh, Caleb Judkins, the applicant, and we're just looking to combine these two lots to make a slightly larger yard for our kids. So appreciate the approval.
approval, and we think it'll be beneficial to the neighborhood as well, raising property. So we're going to have gym set and everything there we all come down and play with, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Thank you. Thank you. Is that all the comments for this evening? Okay, I'll close the public hearing, open her back up to commissioners for uh, further discussion or a motion. Yeah, I'm good with it. This is Commissioner Bullock. I move to recommend approval of the homestead at Suki Farms lot phase four lots 29 and 30 combining lots 29 and 30 and pass it on to city council with uh, two findings and five conditions commissioner tupo i second that so i have a motion by commissioner bullock and a second by commissioner tupo uh, all in favor individually anderson aye bullock Aye. Tupo? Aye. Uh, Mitchell? Aye. And I'm Sheil, I'm an aye. The motion passes unanimous and it will, uh, does, does that, that doesn't go to the city council, correct? Or does it? It does. Okay, that goes to city council. I didn't see that, I read that in there. But anyway, there you go. Onward and upward. Item number 6A is a public hearing also for consideration and recommendation to City Council Conditional Use Permit C-23-12 for a proposed gas station and RV park located at approximately 4395 East Telegraph Street. Applicant is Rosenberg and Associates. I'll turn it over to Eldon and staff for comments. Thank you, commissioners. Zoning regulations require new development that's adjacent to Telega Telegraph Road to obtain conditional use permit approval. The applicant is proposing a 5,100 square foot convenience store and an additional 1,750 square feet of dining area inside of the convenience store for a combined square footage of 6,850. The fuel pumps are to the south of the convenience store and there are seven of these gas pump stations. The RV park is just north of Razor Ridge Pond and consists of 56 pad sites and a clubhouse. The clubhouse is on the main floor and consists of 1,482 square feet. The upper floor of the clubhouse is 1,378 square feet and consists of a living quarters for an on-site manager to reside in. The building elevations and finishes as shown in the exhibit for the gas station and RV park are aesthetically pleasing. The area between the gas station and RV park is being improved with a 39 foot private drive that will bring three future commercial uses, which will need conditional use permit approval prior to beginning construction. As shown on the proposed plan, the 39 foot private drive will include three ingress, egress points, two of which are onto Telegraph and one is onto Razor Ridge Drive. The applicant is planning to connect these access points in this first phase. The parcel is zoned planned community development commercial. The zoning to the north, east and south is Hurricane City and plan community development to the west, which is Washington City. Staff has reviewed the proposed project and finds that it meets the standards as outlined in the zoning ordinance. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission recommend approval of C-23-12, allowing for a convenience store, gas station, gas pumps, dining area, and a recreation vehicle park to be located at 4395 East Telegraph, and that's on to City Council 
based on the following findings and subject to the following conditions in your report. There's a few slides here that we can skim through, discuss the project. Um, all that is being presented to you tonight is the areas in dark gray. The wider areas will be future and uh, need to go through the same process that we're doing tonight. I do want to note there's a block wall shown on this plan. Um, it starts along Telegraph on the east side of the RV park and is to the north of the pond and then all along Razor Ridge Drive. So, so the whole west and kind of south end of that RV park will be secluded behind a block wall. Will you show your cursor where that's going? So starting right here on this inlet into the development, it's going to wrap around to the north side of the pond and then follow all the way up Razor Ridge Drive. And in fact, we'll cut in front of the, the future hotel that they have listed on here and we'll die in between the, the two parcels there. Is that a six foot block wall? It is. There's also a 10 foot trail that is being shown on the plan. It's gonna connect into the existing trail, wrap around the north side of the pond, and then that 10 foot trail will continue north on Razor Ridge Drive and stub out for future connectivity as well. So time out on the on the left side of Razor Ridge, there's some dotted like buildings. What are those? Is that? These here is keep, the, No, go to the left side. On the other side, keep moving right there. What's that? What are those? Those are existing st structures, buildings. So they're, they're that, residential lots? Yeah, not, not included with this. Right, but they, they are. Is there homes on it? Is that developed? There are homes. Aren't those all vacation rentals up in there? Yeah, those are existing uh, residential units. Um, okay. There is a vacation or a short-term rental overlay, and so most of them, as I understand, are owned and operated for, you know, kind of night nightly rental type uses. Okay, thanks. You'll see them right there. So six foot block wall starting roughly here, wrapping all the way around the pond, continuing north to Razor Ridge Drive, okay. back east and the block walls roughly stop here. Same with the trail here, 10 foot trail running north and south along Razor Ridge Drive. Thank you. This is a grading plan. This digs into the landscaping. You can see it's heavily landscaped. Trees, bushes, gravel. No grass areas. Again, more specifics on the landscaping. This is up by the gas station on the corner of Telegraph and SR9. Landscaping near the RV park. Here's the elevation of the clubhouse and on-site management that will live in the upper floor. As you can see it's a well-dressed building. The floor plan for the main level, the living quarters on the second floor. And lastly, the gas station elevations, the north and south variety of product again well well dressed 
and then the east and west elevations. And that, got one more view. That concludes my staff report. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, thank you. This I'll is, open it up to commissioners for discussion. This is Commissioner Mitchell. I'm just curious, is there gonna be any egress onto State Highway 9 or the only egress is coming off of Telegraph? Or entrance and egress? It's off of Telegraph. There's two on to Telegraph and one proposed one onto Razor Ridge Drive. And then the third one, yeah, on Razor Ridge. We do have, I don't know if all you saw the uh, online response we received. Yeah. And they basically talked about, like, I'm, I mean, they're concerned about the Rachel Ridge uh, access into the development and they're concerned about possibly with uh, how many people come and go on rv parks possibly trying to break into their swimming pools and things like that so it you know it just brings riffraff sometimes but that's also that's also a vacation rental area right there too that's so, true and i mean I, i'm glad that was perfect. clarified it's yeah. perfect I, I think it's a really great spot to put this yep to be honest i wish they had a little more grass they i realize they don't have any i wish they had a little people that come with their rvs usually have their dogs and stuff yeah. and <clears throat> to walk their dogs would be probably make sense to have a little bit of grass there so they don't go over into the other subdivision but that's my opinion they that would be my only concern. By one of our RV parks in exit 13, I, we believe some of the occupants have built a, with just with shovels and hands, a dirt bike trail down some of our desert hill open spaces. And so mostly folks come here to stay and then go play but occasionally there are some that just come and stay and need something to do but for the most part we we keep we keep aware and monitor those things i've pulled up um an area that they are going to put artificial turf in okay. um okay. so they I, I believe they are planning to accommodate for pets in the artificial turf yeah that's way. that was my that only was, that was my only concern so that they don't you can okay, see my right mouse there. hovering yeah. over that artificial turf area. Is that they can run over and go on to the neighbors. Okay, with uh, that, we'll open up the public hearing and invite anybody to come up and, and talk, and also the applicant, if they're here, if they'd like to come up. Being pretty quiet. We will close the public hearing and go back to commissioners to see if you have any other comments or look for a motion. Just Commissioner Anderson, I have a question for, for uh, the engineer, if he's here. Online? Okay. I'm here, yeah, I'm online. Can you hear me? Um, my question, so the city engineer recommended that we add as a condition that the secondary access be completed in phase one. Where is the secondary access going to be on here? Which one? Which of the entrances? So um, both of the entrances along Telegraph will be completed. I think what um, the engineer was referring to would be the entrance along uh, Razor Ridge Drive. It's kind of off from the development, but um, sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. There'll be three entrances that will be constructed with this development. One on Razor Ridge and two along Telegraph. So I think Paul was referring to an additional entrance along uh, Razor Ridge to the, on the north end, kind of just south of where the, the future hotel would be at. Is this right, uh, Eldon? I don't recall that, that comment. That sounds correct, yes. Thanks, Jared. Did you understand that? Where would it go to, though? If it's on the north end, I mean, where is it? 
kind of sketched in. Where's it tying into? Right, there. right, but there's no development from that area to the gas station right now, so. Mm. Or the horizontal road that, that ties in from up top across. Exactly. Just, it's like gravel or whatever for the time being or whatever they want. Yeah, so we have quite a few. Okay. Okay. And it looks like, I'm assuming from the drawing here, it looks like we got right in turn lanes on both of those, it looks like, am I correct? Yeah, there's a deceleration lane on, on both of the entrances on Telegraph. The, where's the storm drain located on, on this? What, what are we doing for LID? Well, a couple of things. Most of the site has a lot of clay, so we won't be doing any sort of retention. Um, any storm drain would be, um, would, would outfall close to the pond out there along Telegraph. That's the low point of the development. So everything would, would likely have some, some sheet flow across the development and then outfalling onto Telegraph. Okay, thank you. I guess one other question is Commissioner Anderson again, are there any amenities planned at all with with the uh, the, the RV park or just just the trees showing on the landscaping plan? Um, there is the clubhouse. Um, there should be some activities there. And then just the landscaping is all I'm familiar with. Um, I don't know. S Steve, is, who's the architect, is there. I don't know. He might have some more insight on that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Steve Beasley from Desert Edge Architecture. I also represent the applicant. So the intent is that that area just north of here is going to be another development, which will include additional amenities. Those haven't been determined yet, but there's probably going to be a pool, playground area, stuff like that. But the only amenity space is the dog park with this one and the clubhouse. Would those future amenities, would they be accessible to the, to the RV park or no? The intent is they're going to be shared. Does the acceleration deceleration go all the way through both entrances? Like, will it continue all the way through? Or does it start and stop in between? No, so the way it works out, it's just a decel lane. So it's only uh, north of the entrances. And then once you're at the entrance, it stops. There isn't an, an acceleration lane, it's just a deceleration lane. Sorry, does that make sense? Yes, thanks. Okay, it's our turn. I can make one if you want. Commissioner Anderson, I'll make a motion to approve, uh, to recommend approval of this conditional use. Does this go to City Council or no? It does. It does. Make a motion to recommend approval of C 23 12, request for conditional use permit for a gas station and recreation vehicle park located at approximately 4395 East Telegraph with the four findings and 12 conditions as outlined by staff. Oh, I second that. I have a, a motion by Commissioner Anderson, a second by Commissioner Tupo. Uh, individual voting, Anderson? Aye. Uh, Bullock? Aye. Tupo? Aye. And Mitchell? Aye. And I'm a shill, I'm an aye, and motion passes unanimously and we'll move forward to the City Council for their Okay. Thanks, Item number 6B is also a public hearing. Uh, that's 
for a request for a conditional use permit for a wellness spa located at Cotton Town Village, Lot 2. It is item number, or per, conditional use permit number C-23-13. And the applicant is Kathy Jo Staley and Civil Service. I'll turn over some time to staff and Eldon for comments. Thank you, commissioners. Zoning regulations require commercial buildings over 5,000 square feet to obtain a pro an approved conditional use permit. The proposed wellness center is 5,870 square feet and will provide lodging and resort, resort style treatments for an eight guest room facility. The owner will reside on site in a separate living area. The wellness center will provide all meals via an on-site kitchen. The lower level consists of a yoga room, steam room, and additional therapy rooms. These amenities are only for guests staying in the center and are not open or offered to the general public. The average guest stay ranges from 7 to 21 days. Guests typically arrive via the airport and pick up drop off trans transportation is provided by the center. With the owner living on site, a covered parking stall will be provided and is shown on the plan. The applicant is also asking for setback relief on both side yards. Under the commercial mixed use development standards, side setbacks are specified at 10 feet. The applicant is showing the south side property line at 8.73 feet and, <clears throat> excuse me, the north side property line at five feet. If the applicant is able to satisfy the fire and building code standards, Staff feels comfortable with the proposed setbacks. Staff has reviewed the proposed project and finds that it meets the standards as outlined in the general plan and zoning ordinance. The building elevations and finishes are aesthetically pleasing and appears that this development will be a welcomed addition to the city. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission recommend approval of C-23-13, allowing for a wellness center to be built at Cotton Town Village, Lot 2 subdivision, and that's on to the City Council based on the following findings and subject to the following conditions as shown in the report. <clears throat> There's a few slides here that we can review. Here's the site plan. The detailed landscape plan. The entire site will be landscape, trees, and covered gravel, shrubbery. The elevations. So this is a new build, correct? It is a new build. And then lastly, building elevation specifics, going with the lighter tones, dark roof. Yeah, be a good looking building to add into the cotton mill subdivision. And I'm happy to answer any questions you may have at this time. So this is like the northwest corner of that Cotton Town Village, like kind of back north towards the residential. I'll pull it up here and show you exactly where it's going. On that <clears throat> highlighted lot is lot two. So is there more than a typical driveway? Is there gonna be parking? 
It's it's a shared parking. Um, this site is accommodating all the parking that this site will need, um, and the covered parking as well for the on-site management. Garage or just covered? Uh, just covered is what they're proposing. Eldon, can you point out again the setbacks that were being requested or the easement? So this north property is showing a five foot setback and then the south is, they're asking for one, just over a foot relief there, 1.25 feet approximately on the south side. So I don't, I don't know where you park it. That's kind of my concern. That's what I'm looking for is where they're parking. So the parking is that park is right there to the right, right? Is that additional new parking? So is that parking for all Cotton Village? That's parking for this for that unit okay. conditional use permit for this particular property. Correct. It'll be okay. Improved parking. Okay. Yes, this conditional use permit is bringing this parking with it. So will that be, uh, I'm trying to visualize what, because some of them, there's like gravel down there, but this would be asphalt or concrete? Hard surfaced. Hard surfaced, okay. Okay, this is a public hearing. I'm going to open the public hearing to the congregation. Sorry, did I sh did I scare you out there? Looked like I had a few of you jump. Anyway, uh, we're going to open that up, and uh, if the gap applicants here, if they'd like to come up and and make comments, we'd invite that. Thank you. I'm Kathy Jo Staley, and I appreciate your. Um, uh, suggestions or questions, if you have any, I'm happy to answer them. And I don't have anything to say outside of answering questions that you have. Yeah, good. great. Thank you. Okay, thanks for coming up. Anybody else like to make comments? Okay, we'll close this public hearing and turn it over to the commissioners for Further comments or a motion? Commissioner Tupo, I make a motion to recommend approval of C-23-13, allowing for a wellness center to be built at Cotton Town Village, Lot 2 subdivision onto the city council based on the following four findings and seven conditions. 10. Or 10 conditions, yeah. excuse me. Commissioner yeah. Anderson, I second. So I have a motion by Commissioner Tupo, a second by Commissioner Anderson. Individual voting, Anderson? Aye. Bullock? Aye. Tupo? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. And I'm Shill, and I'm also an aye. Motion passes unanimously and will be recommended to the City Council. Moving on. We have another public hearing. Uh, it's a, a final plat approval for the Cotton Mill 2 subdivision located approximately 700 West Telegraph. Uh, lot 6 minor subdivision. Uh, I guess that's, we've all gone through that. The applicant is Progress Square Partners Limited and D.C. Cotton Mill. We'll turn it over to staff uh, Eldon for your review. Thank you, commissioners. Just to wrap your head around where we're at for this one, uh, Best Buy, Red Robin there is what we're discussing. And I'll switch over to the plaid. You can kind of orient yourselves. The applicant is asking to split the current 18.37 acres into six parcels. The current zoning at this location is C2 with open space to the north and C2 to the east, south, and west. Staff has reviewed the requested proposal 
and the proposed Cotton Mill 2 subdivision conforms to the standards as set forth in the zoning regulations and subdivision ordinances of the city. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission recommend approval of the final plat for the Cotton Mill 2 subdivision onto the City Council based on the following findings and subject to the following conditions as stated in the report. And I'm happy to answer any questions you may have at this time. So this is Commissioner Anderson. So what exactly, you said this is where Best Buy and Red Robin are? Like, so it's, what, say I'm that like, again. So this is a current development? That's is this a current development that's getting split or? Is there any way to overlay the, the zoning map with with the Google Maps so we can see what we're Thanks. doing here? I'll help try so to orient us here. Here's the inlet coming in 700 West. Now let's follow that onto this map, 700 West. So it's just that parking area, is that correct? Does that include the buildings too? It It's the entire site, 18 point So, what are we, what are each of those buildings in? The big one is Best Buy, right? Or Kohl's? You zoom in a little bit. Which one is which? I, I don't think Best Buy is involved in it. All, all of these buildings are involved. It, it's, all the buildings are all involved? Yeah, but Best Buy is that way best buy is the other way to keep holes are like a nutrition here's the current cotton mill two subdivision you can see this outline Some of that nutrition. so we're breaking this down so that's where natural grocers is is yeah. that correct correct you yeah, have red robin on the corner we're breaking this down into six subdivision is what the owner wants to do they can sell if they would like um, typically that's why people break parcels right. off is to sell them yeah it's ex everything is existing roadways in place utilities nothing's changing other than we're subdividing this so how many parcels piece. are they looking for six six so potentially the buildings could be I guess this is separated and then you can six individuals do do the do these new lines go through the building? I obviously they do. Some of the buildings will stay jointed, others will separate out. And you can see where those lines fall here on the on the parcel. So you, this is Commissioner Anderson, so you're so lot two would be Joann's and Natural Grocers. Lot four would be Kohl's and Ross. Lot five would be, lot five would be Ross and whatever else is over there, the, I guess. And then lot th three, lot three, I guess would be Red Robin, right? Correct. Bank across the and then the bank would be lot one. So and lot six. And then the parking lots just stay as like common area, I, I assume. Yeah, parking shared shared access, common okay. agreement. That makes more sense. All of them with utilities. I was thinking the parking lots were splitting it a lot too. So if well, the parking's uh, still going to go with Coles, right? No, it's common. There, there's shared agreements for the parking, um, so they can't claim parking for one side it's, it's all shared shared parking through there who who's in charge of maintenance on it I would wouldn't, think wouldn't this be in like a, a I'm, I'm thinking it's gonna have have to have like an hoa type of thing right yeah, like well, some sort of association that pays taxes right, on the parking an lots and with a can but uh somebody's got to take ownership on that and be responsible for it so is that the coles building it looks to me there there'll be an own, owner for each parcel and each parcel's owner will be responsible for their land upkeep um, if, if they want to create an agreement 
a maintenance agreement between all owners, they're happy to do so, and, and that would satisfy oh. our requirements. Well, they, they'd have to, because you've got the, the entire parking lot is owned commonly, and the roads. Is this Coles right here? No. Well, Coles is lot four. Yeah, and they, they include this That's down not. here, or do they come through down here? No, the everything in the middle is common area. All the parking lots are like common, and the roads are common. Lots are the buildings up top, except for Red Robin. It has its own parking, it looks like. It seems like the way it's drawn in that it does include the parking lot. Yeah. It does. Maybe it does. I'd like to I clarify does. that the the, the, the parking lot lots are lines included. are included down okay. in. So is the applicant okay, that here? Makes more sense. Yes. So what about the streets? They, are they just responsible for the streets that fall on their land? I guess. Why don't Why don't we uh, pull the applicant up? He can explain it to us. So I'll open this up for public comments, and invite the applicant to come up and and kind of answer our questions. Thank you. <clears throat> well, you, you pay a can fee for all that. Thank you. Hi, Commissioner. So the, I'm Ryan Lay. I'm with Bush and Gudgel, or the engineers that are helping them through this process. So I think our our question is is how how the division lines come in. Coles uh, is one big happy building. And it comes all the way down, includes a lot of the parking lot. Is that correct? Is yes. that how we're reading it? Yeah, that's correct. And then the other properties, uh, this one here, lot two, who is that? Natural Grocer. Okay, and so that's, that's a double tenant building with this parking, correct? I mean, yes, that, that area is included in, their, in the land this in that lot. Yes. Deal right here. Yes, that's a separate lot. Okay, so you got a lot here that comes down, a lot here that comes down, a lot here that comes all the way down, correct? Yep. And, and lot here. And they'll, they will have an association, HOA or whatever. Correct? Yeah, there's shared park, park, shared access and parking agreements right. that are all in place and have been in place for years between the businesses. And, and, and they'll participate in their common area fees, so yes. they'll have a management there. So will that, that take care of... This commissioner, will that take care of? Uh, I, my only question is, what what if you, know, you get potholes in, like the main entrance road coming through here that's owned by lot two, and he doesn't want to fix the road? I mean, is that part of their maintenance agreement that they I, I they all have that's to all jointly fix it? In their their agreements. That'll be in part part of the yeah, HOA. That'd be my only thing. Is like, yeah, if someone goes like, I'm not going to fix the road, then <laughs> that makes sense. And that's the main road. Yeah, I believe that's all taken care of in their agreements between the, the I mean, at this point, it's all just one owner, but um, they've got all that laid out with their agreements. Is that something that we need to look at and make sure that it's outlined correctly so just, that we're not going to have a future issue with? I, I worry that, I mean, norm, normally, like if this were a normal subdivision, like the, the streets would get like dedicated out to the city or they'd be dedicated to the HOA or whatever, and there'd be like a common entity that would own the streets and take care I of maintenance think, where I, this crosses multiple private land to get access to these buildings that's what i but but in their hoa they're going to have language in there that talks about cross easements i know but that's a whole lot harder to enforce than if if you actually have easements in place and stuff but they'll they'll vote amongst the ownership there who's going to be the president this year i know but and, and there, there are there are recorded easements. Yeah, you've got to have recorded easements yeah. for all. That's all I'm saying. You got to make sure right. there's easements because it doesn't matter if the HOA says do this or do that. If it's on somebody's land and there's no easement, you know. Yeah, we went through all the utility easements and everything with staff, and and they made sure we put them on the you know the the utility easements and such on the plat. I guess it does show that 25 foot. That would be my only. That, that'd be my only concern is that we have proof that that the access of the roadway easements are recorded. That's that's my concern. So I guess uh, and, and there's a recorded, you know, shared agreement that now that they're splitting apart, that it's still going to work or that's been modified or whatever. Is there a, a draft? This is Commissioner Tupo. Is there a draft of the maintenance agreement? I, I don't have one with me, oh, okay. I, um, but I'm, I'm sure I could probably find one. Yes. 
The staff will have the opportunity to look at the title report and, and verify the easements. Yeah. I agree, but. What, what's your concern, Commissioner? Maybe I can. So I guess that'd be ahead. more your, your thing to, to check off, Eldon. I just, if, if we were doing this like from the start, you know, and, and those, those roadways would either, they would get easements and it'd either be dedicated to the city or they'd be dedicated to a common entity like, like an association or whatever. My concern is that where we're just splitting them and you've got, you know, access roads for each of these properties covering multiple property lines and they're not owned by a, a common entity. They're not owned by the city. I mean, it just seems like a can of worms unless you've got, unless we've actually made sure those easements are in place and that there is a revised, uh, you know, agreement covering who who takes care of it. That, that's my only concern. It's just a little unusual the way it's being broken up as far yeah, that, as maintenance that, goes. That's definitely a valid concern. We had those same concerns when we started this in our staff developer meeting. And Bush and Gudgel, they've tracked down those easements, placed them on the plat, and were assured that there's cross access easements for all of those properties. So you you've seen these easements? So who then is responsible for condition that? five? Condition five. Condition five has a post maintenance agreement to be recorded before it's all said and done. Right, but it's already been recorded. I'm just saying it's going to have to be possibly be modified. Well, well, we're changing it, so it has to be re-recorded. So when it's re-recorded, they will put it in. Is that something you're going to check on, Eldon? I mean, or, or are they just going to say, condition, oh, we already have one in place? No, I know that. Condition I'm just saying, 5 in, says in it practice, has to. Or, else it will or do they say it's already been? Because, like, if we're amending a final plat, it says that condition there as well. But they don't actually bring in a new set of CCNRs. They just say there's already one there. That's all I'm saying is... In practice, how does that get checked off? Yeah, I've seen the easement numbers. They're in place. Um, staff has no concern that the cross easements aren't there existing. And there's a maintenance agreement in condition five for the whole subdivision, for the whole right. thing. So it should be okay. Note four, I'll read it. There exists a shared parking and access, ingress, egress between the lots on this plat that can be used for the common use of each of the lots, more particularly shown in reciprocal easement agreement between Coles Department Stores, Inc. and Cotton Mill to LLC recorded on this date as entry. And then it goes in and lists all of those easements that do exist. That's, good. That's what I wanted to say. I guess my only thing would be then just making sure that that the agreement they have in place either works or that we get a new one. That's all. I just I just want somebody to be thinking about that as all. Which I guess would be you or or yeah, I think it's in there. Okay, appreciate you coming up. Anything else you wanna add? Uh, I don't, I don't, unless you have any other questions for me, I'm, okay, I'm good. Is there any other comments in chamber anybody would like to make? So we'll close the public hearing and go back to commissioners for comments or a motion. So condition five, states that a post maintenance agreement be recorded prior to the recording of the final plot who reviews that so that applies to our new developments it's a standard we put on all the plats this one's existing um it, it shouldn't apply so as we're going through that checklist we'll check that box off in our standard process public works myself and legal counsel check that when it does come through So 
I think we're covered. So is there any discussion as to uh, how they abide and continue unity with all the buildings in color and style? Is there any discussion about that? Do we need to think about that? That's based off of zoning. It's currently C2. Um, Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. It's Commissioner Tupo. I recommend approval of the final plat for the Cotton Mill 2 subdivision onto the City Council with the two findings and five conditions in the staff report. This Commissioner Bullock, I'll second. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Tupo, a second by Commissioner Bullock. Uh, individual voting, Anderson. Aye. Bullock? Aye. Tupo? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. I'm Sheil, I'm also an aye. We will uh, pass this on to the City Council unanimously and move forward. That's a wrap for tonight. I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Commissioner Anderson, I'll move to adjourn. Second that. First and the second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.